Alrighty guys, so i uh, been driving the old LML here. Uh, I noticed the old check engine light came on here, so we're gonna scan it. I'm almost certain I know what code it is, uh, judging by the thermostat. But uh, let's just see what's going on here. See if we can get a quick scan on this. I'll just use this thing just because, well, it's here. And there we go. PO128. It's uh, basically coolant below thermostatic threshold. Uh, kind of a common code in these. I figured that's what it was. It had this code pop up in um, spring this year, uh, but because of the warmer weather, it didn't reset it. Actually, it cleared itself. So um, if you have an LML, then you're driving. I just literally got back from hell, an hour long ride. And I know there's a little bit of a glare on the screen. Let me drop that in. If your thermostat sits there the entire ride at that like one fourth mark between 160 and 210, you have a bad thermostat. These LMLs, it should ride with a good thermostat after you drive it, you know, a little ways and it's up to temperature, it should sit at the 210 mark. Even though it's not technically 210 degrees, this is typical GM fashion, that gauge is so inaccurate, it's just a guess. And I'll prove it to you right here. So it's saying, you know, what would you guess that at? Maybe, you know, the 180, 190 is what, you know, that gauge is reading because 210 is the top and 160 is you know stone cold so let's see what the actual scan tool says and here you go i don't know if you guys could see 156 it's right there coolant 156 degrees if we go back and look at the gauge 156 hell i mean if it was 156 it would be on stone cold and I'll be honest with you, when it's reading 210, that's about like 185. And that's honestly where they should run, but it's just very deceiving on these gauges. So uh, the gauge is inaccurate, but I'll just tell you, if you're you know, driving, like I said, and it's on this between quarter and, and if it's not at the 210 mark, basically, you got bad thermostats and then you changed out. It's basically as simple as that. Um, I'll tell you, this code basically sets because it looks at just a few simple things that ECM looks at. Uh, it's looking at, uh, was it a cold start? The distance or basically time, uh, a time the engine has run and air the engine has drawn in. So if you don't really know, uh, you know, an engine should basically use, it's, it's gonna use so much fuel as to how much air it drew in. So it's looking at mass airflow sensor. If it drew in, you know, how many hundred cubic feet of air, it should have burned so much fuel. It doesn't care about boost or nothing because its boost is irrelevant at this point. It's just looking at air drawn in. Air drawn into the engine through the mass airflow sensor should burn so much fuel and should heat the engine up to a certain temperature within a certain time frame. And if it doesn't meet that threshold, then it's gonna set this code. Um, and like I said, this truck is driven for a little bit and uh, not had the code set. So, uh, I mean, it does take a while, but uh, I'm gonna show you guys how I uh, how I change these. Pretty simple. I'm gonna let the truck cool off here. I already got the thermostats using AC Delco genuine GM parts and we'll get her all swapped out. Alrighty guys, so this is what I got for tools. I figured I'd set it out. Uh, I do these all the time. I basically know exactly what I need and I know I'm missing one thing now that I'm looking at it. But anyhow, uh, you're gonna need a pair of pliers, just something to disconnect the rad hoses with the uh, factory clamps. I use about a 12 inch extension on a quarter inch drive with a 12 millimeter on the end, a quarter inch air ratchet, three eighths air ratchet, a 13, a 15, and uh, an air gun. And obviously you can do this with uh, hand tools if you so desired. Uh, but uh, I'm not and uh, these are the part numbers for an LML uh, if you're curious I'm not sure if they're the same or not uh, You can see they were definitely ordered for me Although they misspelled my name uh, But that's the part number there the 97 24 11 29 Then the GM part number on this is the eight digit number the 97 24 uh, 
1130 there. Uh, so those are two factory thermostats I'm going to put in. I always like to put quality thermostats in these things. And uh, let's get going. I actually forgot to mention that there was a fender cover under all those tools and that actually served a purpose too. Two, two purposes. So say if you're doing anything with a coolant system, this is any car, you know, anything with a pressurized cooling system and you need to disconnect the cooling cap uh, or depressurize the system, which is dangerous. I would not recommend doing it. Uh, but this engine, I can feel the rad hose here. There's not much pressure left on it. I left it sit here and cool off. But I still like to do this just in case. Uh, and this little trick works in case you absolutely have to take the cap off. You know, I don't know, say you're in a pinch or something. Uh, or you're lazy and you don't want to wait. Whatever the case may be. What you're going to want to do is take the fender cover. Just lay it over that, just like that. And then twist the cap off like this. Uh, with the thing on. That way, if it blows up, all it's going to do is go and just nothing, it's not going to, the, the hot coolant's not going to come up and splash you. I usually keep my hand here, that way it doesn't blow up this side. Uh, and it's just a nice little trick I've learned. I've seen a lot of guys get burned uh, from stuff like this, so. Like I said, there's not really much pressure on this, so I don't foresee us even getting a reaction out of this, but you kind of got to reset this, but it's a neat little trick I thought I'd show you guys. There you go, we're already done. Uh, and now we could actually use the fender cover for what the fender cover was designed to do. We'll put it back here, throw that up in our you know, tool tray. All right, it's kind of hard to orient yourself, but this is an oil fill cap. The uh, AC compressor is right here. First thing I'm gonna do is zip this one uh, front 15 millimeter out of this thing, kind of get it out of the way. And you're not taking the AC compressor off by any means. Uh, it's just this one bolt gets in your road, so it's just easier to take it out than to fight around it. And it's sort of a little bright. I wish you guys could see better, but there's two 13 millimeter bolts that hold this uh, fuel test cap port on. Uh, and like I said, the one tool I forgot to show you guys is this 13 millimeter wrench. So just a 13 millimeter wrench. I usually just, and really all you need it for is the lower bolt. It's kind of a pain to get to is the reason you took that 15 out in the beginning. Alright, then this is going to be loose. What all I do is just take it back, flip it back here somewhere, get it out of your road, sort of, however you can. Take that. This is going to be clipped into a little clip on the top of the thermostat housing. Do the same thing, just unclip it and just push it out of your way. Uh, you don't really have to remove it too much. I just kind of tuck it back by the EGR cooler there. And that's it. Then you're going to want to zap that 13 out of there. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is take the hose off. It's often tempting to do this first, but I try to keep the coolant inside the engine as long as I can. That's basically my theory here. Uh, I hate the feel of coolant working in it all the time. Uh, so I try to avoid it as best as possible. So uh, now's when I take the hose off, but you could take it off first if you really so desire. Um, th there's not gonna be a ton that comes out of here. There we go. And a lot of times you're gonna wanna just roll the hose from side to side. Sometimes uh, they have like picks to get in here. Uh, typically I don't need them for these, but this thing is still a little bit warm. I mean, been sitting about an hour since then but it's still hot there's a lot of cooling in there okay and i'll just show you guys typically i'll just flip this the whole way over under this battery tray and it kind of just holds it there it'll hang out spill just a little bit keep the mess to a minimum and another thing i forgot to mention was i do have a, a tray underneath here to catch uh the coolant so uh and something i uh failed to mention was I said a 12 millimeter uh, some of them do have 12 millimeters that hold the uh, thermostat housing down literally I just did one yesterday that had 12s <laughs> so I said 12 but this one has 13 so I think it was a year thing uh, if you're asking me in my opinion uh, certain years have certain sizes but it's either gonna be a 12 or a 13 uh, and then 
there's four of them one two three four four bolts i'll show you the housing once we get it out uh, but we're basically to that point almost um the only thing i'm forgetting here is and we'll do it next is uh this bolt here holds um oil fill on and then there's also a 13 that holds this upper fan shroud on you're only going to have to take out this 113 you don't have to undo every fan shroud bolt uh, so just those two 13s will buzz them out real quick and as you can see for this one uh, i'll take my air ratchet and jam it between go between the ac compressor and the fan and with a swivel socket it works ideal you can get right to it and just buzz it right out that's how i do them all the time and they're a little pain because you can't zip them out with your fingers they got blue loctite on them so you do kind of it does kind of help to have the air ratchet for sure you can kind of do the same thing with this. Try not to drop your bolts, that's always a pain. Alrighty guys, maybe a little hard to see. I'll try to point to it as best I can. Right there's one, two, three. And there's one back here you can't see. Got all four bolts out of there and you wanna take the bolts out. Uh, don't leave them in the housing. You'll drop them in the valley and they'll be gone forever. You'll be searching for another one. Uh, so let's wrestle this thing out of here. It shouldn't be too bad. Uh, and then I'll show you where the thermostats are bad, usually how you can tell. I usually just give her a pop up there. You gotta unseat it from that. Uh, fan shroud there's a little dowel on there I'm trying to make sure my pan is hitting most of my coolant it's always hard to catch it all but It does typically take just a little bit of finagling just to get this out of here. But you could definitely do it. I'd... Okay, there's our housing out of there. You guys seen me yank it out. And then the gasket's still stuck on that fr front one there. Oh, well, at least it hit the ground. That's all I got to say about that. Ugh. All right, so there they are. I have them set in there. This is how they go. Uh, the one with the two holes always goes in the back, uh, and then the one with no holes in it goes in the front. Um, usually, I don't see it on this one, but you see this rubber right here I'm kind of pointing to? It's usually blowed out and actually holding the panel of this open. That's how I usually find them. I don't see it on this, um, but what could be bad in this one is the actual uh, mechanism in here that pushes to cause this to open uh, a lot of times if the there's like wax in here and if it leaks out then that'll cause it to go bad as well uh, so we'll replace these and we'll see what our temperatures at after we're all done here uh, basically assembly is nothing more than just going in reverse of exactly what i showed you uh, we'll just kind of zip along through that and then uh, we'll get to adding coolant and everything Make sure you dig out the old O-rings if they're stuck either in the housing or uh, in the coolant crossover because that's what this bolts to. 
Um, so just make sure you get them out. You don't want to double gasket it. That'd be a bad day. Alrighty guys, so I uh, got the thermostat housing in there, didn't put any bolts in. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention that's kind of important is uh, you're going to want to take a blowgun. Sorry, that thing keeps getting in the way. Take a blowgun and blow out each one of these holes uh, where that goes into the thermostat housing uh, or the crossover. Because what's going to happen is if you put those bolts in there with all that coolant laying in those bolt holes, uh, it's going to create hydraulic pressure. You could potentially crack that housing because of that coolant being in there. So you're going to want to take a blowgun, just blow each hole out real quick so the coolant's not sitting in there uh, and you'll be all squared away. That's just something I just realized I should have mentioned. Uh, so just make sure you blow those out. You know, it's kind of important. And it's going to help you thread those bolts in. Uh, even if it doesn't crack, that's going to be hell trying to fight against that coolant pressure on the other side of that. So, And uh, before I put the bolts in, I just take a quick blow it out real quick doesn't take much alrighty guys we basically almost got her back together uh, another thing I want to show you is I didn't note uh, make mention of it but I put this clamp in a lock position some of you may know what I'm talking about uh, it's locked open uh, and this could be good and bad. You got to watch this thing. This thing's a loaded gun and it will smack your fingers and it will sting like no other. Uh, but it's kind of convenient because now you don't need the pliers anymore. All you need is a nice flat blade screwdriver and you could release that thing very simply. Uh, and this screwdriver is just a tad bit long for this. Put the screwdriver through the hole and then press down and it releases just like that. It's actually kind of convenient after you realize that's how they work. Um, and then the only thing I'll do other than that is, uh, maybe it's just me being fanatical, but I always like these uh, clamps to be in the same spot. So you can kind of see the old witness mark of where it was. And I like putting it back just where it was so nobody can tell you were in here. Just one of those little pet peeve kind of things, you know? Alrighty, so after you got her all buttoned up, you're going to want to add some coolant. Uh, I'm adding Dex Cool to this bad butte. This is concentrate mix, so we could add water on top of this. Uh, and a little trick for you, pour this way, don't, don't pour this way, it'll make a mess. Make less of a mess this way. There we go. I'm going to start her up. We can burp the coolant and everything. Get all the air out. <laughs> Alrighty guys. Let's take this thing for a rip. We'll see uh, see what our temperature gets to after a fresh pair of thermostats. The thing's already heated up to about where it was before, so if it gets any hotter, can't remember the exact number, you guys could tell me in the comments section below, um, but it's at 154 uh, through the ECM right now. We'll see if we can get her any hotter than that. I feel like that's close to where it was, 158 maybe that rings a bell. Alrighty guys, so we just came back from our road test. Uh, you can see the check engine light's still on. It takes a couple ignition cycles to clear, but I'm just going to clear that with the scan tool anyhow. Uh, but I want to show you guys, we're at uh, 181 degrees right now. Uh, on my road test, it got to 190. You could tell the thermostat opened, uh, and it cycled back down to 180, and it just kept bouncing back and forth, and that's basically where it's been sitting at. And I'll show you where it's at on the gauge now. And see, I told you 180 to 185 is at 210. That's where it should run all the time. If you have an LML Duramax and it's not, and when it's running and you're basically driving for a while, operating temperature, it should be right there. If it's not, you basically have bad thermostats. It's what it's boiled down to. It's a very common thing on these. Um, 
Uh, kind of all the Duramaxes have this kind of issue with the thermostats. I don't want to say issue, but they just go bad over time. It's just something that happens to them. Um, now, I will say um, kind of the cat eye body style of these, uh, the gauge isn't this way. It's Normally, they don't run straight up at 210. The gauge, in my opinion, is a little more accurate on those. Uh, this is just absurdly off, if you're asking me. Uh, before, when it was at 150, you see that that gauge, uh, it would basically be stone cold, but it's way up here. It's, it's just, it's extremely inaccurate. It's more like a guess. I just wanted to make a video uh, kind of quick on, you know, diagnosing roughly diagnosing um, and replacing a set of thermostats on a Duramax, uh, specifically an LML, like I said, uh, this would be uh, 2011 to 2016 body style. Um, but obviously it's the same general. Those thermostats, the, the location of them hasn't changed since the Duramax come out. So um, I really appreciate all the followers I've been getting. Uh, I'm really trying to get to a thousand subscribers. Uh, if you guys could help me do that, that would be fantastic. Uh, I really enjoy making these videos. I think it's fun, you know, it gives me something to do a little extra. And it just makes the work kind of fun, basically. Um, so, like I said, if you guys could leave a comment, like, definitely subscribe. I'd appreciate it, and we'll see you guys on the next one.